Hi, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's reading of Max Licato's book, The Story. I'm excited today to be reading. I'm reading from the lake, only it's a little bit loud outside today. People are moving their trailers and things like that. So um, I'm just newly at this to be recording outside and with other noises and distractions going on. So uh, today's uh, reading, I'm going to be reading from inside our new home, inside our Laredo. So we are now living full time in our Laredo at the lake and we are loving it. So thank you for tuning in and thank you very much for your patience during the time that we were um, moving out of the hotel. That was during the July 1st and then we just took a bit of a break had to get in here and get settled and everything so it has been two weeks since we have been together for Bible study so thank you for tuning in I hope you're having a great summer and I hope where you are the COVID-19 restrictions are lifting as they are here life is getting to be a little bit more back to normal so I hope it is for you as well so today I want to start off and then I'm excited to read uh, the Birth of a King, Chapter 22, The Story. So let's just start reading. The very first sentence is something that, it's a, it's a sentence that I think about and mull about a lot. And I hope you do too. That in the beginning was the Word. Let's read Chapter 22. And I hope you can see me. It's a, today, I mean, it's been a total heat wave. I'm sure it has been where you are too. And it's been beautiful here in Alberta, but it has been super, super hot. But today it's a little bit nicer, a little bit cloudier and so forth. So um, it's not as bright in here as it normally would be. And, uh, and it's early, early in the morning too. So I, uh, I'm thankful for you to be tuning in. So let's start reading. The Birth of a King, Chapter 22. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been, that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He was seen in his glory, the glory of the one, the only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who himself, who himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Let's read that again. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who 
is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Who will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I have goosebumps as I'm reading it, and maybe you can see it straight through the camera. How amazing is that? Can you imagine? And said, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her, and Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. For now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, holy in his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has prepared mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their most in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. But he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. How did Mary a virgin, become pregnant. She and Joseph were engaged, but had not had sexual relations. No medical doctor could answer this question, but such was the mysterious nature of Mary's conception and Jesus' birth, a miraculous beginning ordained by God's power alone. Imagine Mary's problem explaining this incredible experience she couldn't understand it herself, much less explain it to her friends and family. In that day and time, an engagement was considered as strong a commitment as marriage, although Joseph and Mary were not officially married. Although he probably wanted to believe Mary, Joseph was in a difficult situation. Engaged and committed to a woman, whom his family and friends would now despise. Joseph decided it best to break off the engagement until an unusual visitor changed his perception. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive 
and the birth of a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own hometown to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. They were there. The time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone on them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on him his favor rests. Again, that says, Glory to God in the highest, on the earth peace to those on him on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things he, they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Joseph and Mary decided to remain in Bethlehem after Jesus was born, faithful to the law of Moses They had Jesus circumcised when he was eight days old. They there, a new family, was greeted by two older saints, Simeon and Anna, to whom God gave the opportunity to see and recognize the Messiah before the end of their days. And these wouldn't be the last individuals to discern the special nature of the child Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs and priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. 
Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the star. Okay, there's big trucks working. When they, when they came, the star stopped over the place where the child was. I'm just going to wait just one minute. That's loud. Oh, that's very loud. Well, it's very convenient, but it's very loud. And when I was thinking about the good news I was going to be reading today, this is also such good news for our family as well. So I'm thankful to be sharing our new family news with you and the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord and Savior. So hang on here. Now, where did I end up here? And it says here, after they heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with the, his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and go escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod and was so fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old or under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel re weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard the Ar Archulus, Archulus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in the town called Nazareth. Nothing more is known about the boy, Jesus, until he appears in Jerusalem at age 12. Most likely he learned carpentry skills as a youngster from Joseph and studied in the synagogue. His mind grew strong, along with his body and soul. While still a youth, his agile mind was ready to engage in discussion with synagogue leaders. One time, Jesus became so engrossed in learning and questioning that he, was lo that he lost track of time. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, 
they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it, thinking he was with thinking he was in their company. They traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked, Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Who was this Jesus? A new prophet? A scholar designed or destined to be a great rabbi? Perhaps a political leader with a charisma to finally send the oppressive Romans, Roman armies who controlled Judea back across the sea? None of these expectations turned out to describe him adequately. In fact, Jesus defined, defied expectations as the people watched and wondered. So it says here, now I'm not going to read this whole thing, but well, maybe let's read it. Let's read it. It's going to be a whole lot of son of everybody. So let's read this. It says, Jesus, this is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Jud Judea, or Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of S S Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz, the father of Oab, Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abijah. Abijah, the father of Asa. Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotam, Jotam, the father of Azah, Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Man Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amon, Amon, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jacona, Jacona, and his brothers at the time of exile to Babylon. I hope you're paying attention and following along. After the exile to Babylon, Jacona was the father of Sheltail, 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 the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, and the father of Abiud, 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 the father of Elakim, Elakim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Akim, 
Achim the father of Elud, Eliud the father of Eleazar, Eleazar the father of Matan, Matan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary the mother of Jesus, who is called Messiah. What a mouthful! And those are all the names that I have struggled with for the last 22 chapters all on one page. So that was really uh, quite, quite a lot. So I thank you so much. That was, um, that was so great. It gives me such joy to read about Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our Messiah. Can you imagine being Mary? Can you imagine being Joseph? Everything. And, and seeing, having angels appear to you in your dreams and things like that. I have a book. Uh, my husband, Ken, um, was away in Largo, Florida when he became a um, uh, polygraph examiner. That's where he was. And he brought me back an incredible book, All the Places in the Bible, um, through... It, it is absolutely amazing. And I just love it. And so all these places that we have been reading about, I'm able to look in here and take a look. So maybe you might take a look for this Life Places of the Bible. Um, it is just an incredible book. And it's something that I like to take a look at while we're reading things like this. So thank you so much. It is not going to be long. And I'm going to be reading again chapter 23. And I'm going to also be doing the questions and answers for chapter 21. And I know there are going to be ch uh, questions for ch uh, chapter 23. So come right back. This is part A and we've only just got started. So thank you again for tuning in. This is going to be our new place to be and uh, I look forward to seeing you. And I can't wait to hear what um, Jesus is doing in your life and how it uh, he's impacting you. Have a great day.